Ubiquiti just released a new product. It's a cable modem, and we have one. Today, we're going to unbox it and add it to our unified configuration. But first, I wanna have a discussion about why would you use a third-party modem when you can simply use the box provided by your internet provider? Well, there's a number of reasons. The first is cost. You see, most providers charge an additional service fee for using their equipment, typically five to $20 per month. So by bringing your own, you can save a little bit there and cover the cost of the modem itself in the long run. The second reason is security. You see, by having a physical appliance on your network or at the edge of your network, your ISP has more telemetry than they otherwise would by simply monitoring your traffic, which they definitely do, by the way. That's because the device is closer to your network. It has wireless built in so it can keep an eye on the wireless frequencies and what's going on there, which is just to the third point, and that is performance and reliability. You see, whether it's a business modem or a home grid modem, most of these boxes aren't just modems. They have a router built into them. They're also providing wireless. It's an access point. They're a switch. And so all this tech is combined into this, you know, sub $100 box that is not very reliable and it does a lot of other things that we just don't want it to do. And a common use case for us is in, down here in Southwest Florida with Comcast, these boxes broadcast Wi-Fi and in some cases you can't turn it off. And wireless frequencies allocation is already a scarce enough resource. We don't need our own modem wasting that space. So using a standalone modem is just a much more cost-effective and simple solution in the long run. And frankly, we have less issues with them. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. And I'm gonna talk about what makes this one exciting and unique as compared to what we're gonna be replacing, which is a Motorola surfboard. So if you looked at the price for this guy, it's priced at $279, which is expensive for a cable modem. But one feature that is unique is that it will work on most business connections. You see, with a lot of these Motorola surfboards and other types of modems, they simply won't work on Comcast business, but this one is advertised to do just that. And so that is a kind of an exciting and unique feature. In the box, we have, some, we have our ears with screws. It's heavier than I would expect. To be honest, I never thought I would see that on a Ubiquiti product. In terms of depth, it has to be the narrowest rack mount component made by Ubiquiti that uh, I've certainly seen. In terms of I.O., we're going to have our Ethernet port right here. That's going to be for our LAN connection. On the back, we have our AC plug for power. Interesting, no RPS connection available here. And then of course, our coax port. This will work for DOSIS 3.1, which is essentially gigabit speeds, although we all know that gigabit on coax is really a lie, but it will support some of the latest, uh, the latest technology in terms of coax speed. Interesting note on the power connection, it is a locking power connection. So it has this uh, switch here, which will lock in the uh, the connection there. Let's go ahead and throw this in the rack and get it activated with uh, Comcast. I just finished installing the modem into our rack and unplugged our coax connection from our old surfboard into the new Unify cable modem and we have no internet. This is because we're going to have to activate the modem with our ISP, but first, let's go ahead and log into our Dream Machine to take a look at the settings and I imagine adopt the device. Now, since we don't have an internet connection, we're not gonna be able to go to unify.uoi.com. Instead, we're just gonna enter in the IP address of our Unify gateway. Interestingly, the UCI is not showing up in the web interface for our Dream Machine, although it is showing up via the Unify mobile app. So let's go ahead and adopt it that way. We're going to activate it. It looks like the device has adopted. Now, we still need to activate it in order to get our internet connection actually working again. And for that, we're gonna need our MAC address right here. Now, this process is gonna vary a lot depending on your ISP. If you're unsure, you can call them and say that you wanna activate a modem. All they're gonna need from you is your MAC ID and maybe some other information like your account number in order to validate that you are who you say you are. In our case, since we have Comcast, we can actually activate this using the Xfinity mobile app. Now, if you happen to have Comcast like me, I'm actually gonna show you how to activate this modem, but if you don't, go ahead and skip ahead to this time right here. I've got the Xfinity app open and it is telling us that we don't have the internet. We're gonna go over to the account section. 
and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to click on activate XFi gateway or modem. Our own modem, we'll start activation. Yes, it is plugged in. Yes, it is powered up. And here we're going to enter in our MAC ID. Here's our UCI. Let's go ahead and copy our MAC address right there. We're going to paste that in. I will not be surprised at all if this doesn't work. Okay, it says estimated time is 11 minutes. So I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and I'll be right back. The next day. I really want to tell you guys that the reason it took me over a day to get this modem activated is Comcast's fault and they just were having issues, uh, but it's not. And some of you may have spotted the mistake that I made earlier in the video. It's the MAC address that populates in the Unify app is the Ethernet MAC address, not the MAC address for the coax port. Since I made that mistake, hopefully you guys don't have to, but let's go ahead and log into Unify and take a look at our modem. Now, interestingly, as I mentioned earlier, when we log into the web interface, it doesn't initially pop up here. And this might be because I'm running a version of Unify that doesn't fully support the UCI yet. The UCI just came out, I believe a week ago, and so it is possible I'm just not on the release that has it. I'm currently running this version on my Unify console and this version of the Unify uh, software. We can actually still take a look at the device though if we go out to settings, down to Unify devices, and then we can see our cable internet modem here. And then we can view it in network. Now there's not a lot of settings here to play with, but I'll show you, we do have the port manager, which there's only one port and we can't actually do anything with that port, but the port manager does exist there. Now if we scroll down, we can see our MAC address. Interestingly, this is the ethernet MAC address. So if you're working with your provider, Make sure you give them either the MAC address that's on the touch screen when you're initially setting up the UCI or the MAC address printed on the back of it next to the coax port. Again, do not give them this MAC address. It will not work. If we go to insights, we can see some of our log activity and history. And if we go over to settings, we can adjust the brightness of the device as well as do a manual firmware update, restart, reset, locate, etc. And that's basically it. And we have those same settings in the Unify mobile app. Now I wanna stress this video is not a review. I've only had the UCI installed for a day and it works, but we'll see how the reliability is in the long run and I'll be sure to update you guys as I continue to use it for my home internet connection. Now with that said, once I finally did give them the right MAC address, activation was actually quite easy. So the question for you though is, should you buy the UCI or should you get something like this, the Motorola surfboard that we ended up replacing? And my answer is, it depends. If you're using Comcast Business, this isn't going to work flat out. And if you're using Cox Business, really you have to use their hardware anyway. So if you're in a Comcast Business situation, it's an easy sell. Get the UCI, get rid of Comcast hardware, use a complete ubiquity stack. What about home use though? And that one's a little bit more complicated because it depends. If you really want everything to be rack mounted, then the UCI might be worth it to you for the $100 additional premium on top of this guy here. And it does look really clean, I must say. Going from having this thing zip tied down and Velcroed in my rack to everything being rack mountable, it looks really clean. But this guy has accomplished the job just fine over the course of years. I've never had to replace this or do an RMA or, or anything. It's a really rock solid piece of kit for, I think, $129. Now, I've actually worked with a number of you guys who are in fairly rural parts of the country. And interestingly, very often you have fiber internet, whereas folks like me in the city don't. And there's kind of two reasons for that. Number one is there's been a lot of federal grants for infrastructure in rural areas, particularly for fiber internet. The other reason is that in the cities, there just isn't competition. In my case, the only alternative is a DSL connection, which isn't great, especially those upload speeds. So for me, really the only option is a coax connection. Although hopefully that will change in the future as we're seeing a lot of competition starting to occur here in Southwest Florida with providers like Summit, Bluehost, and even Hotwire. Not to mention Starlink and these 5G providers that are coming out with uh, you know, Verizon and T-Mobile really trying to get into the home internet space. So hopefully in the future, we won't need cable modems at all and we'll be able to use fiber optics. But until then, we still need to use a modem. And so should you go with the UCI? Well, like I said, it depends. If you're in Comcast business, I would recommend you get it. If you're on a home connection, I think it depends on how OCD you are. Me, I'm very OCD, so I certainly like not having this thing zip tied into my rack. But as far as performance goes, time will tell and I will be sure to give you guys an update in maybe a year from now as I have more experience with the UCI and can better compare it to 
my old faithful Motorola surfboard that I've had kicking around for years. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this unboxing and until next time, I will see you guys in the next video.